Welcome, my name is Matthew, and in this three-part video, we're going to be looking at polar coordinates. And I've broken this video into three sections. First, we're going to talk about plotting polar points, just so that we can sort of get the lay of the land. And then in the second part of the video, <clears throat> which I'll put a link to so you can just click right into the next uh, segment, will be about converting back and forth between or from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates and then rectangular back to polar. And then the third section, uh, the third part of this video, I will talk to you about and give you some demonstrations of how to convert back and forth between rectangular and polar equations. So let's first figure out how to plot polar points. First of all, we need to be familiar with the polar coordinate system and oh that didn't work that's better it's closer that's what I was looking for and the polar coordinate system works like this you do still have coordinates so here we've got point P is equal to R comma theta and R is a radius and theta is an amount of rotation up and away from what you would normally have thought of as the positive x-axis. We're not going to call it the positive x-axis, however. We're going to call it the polar axis. So as you can see, uh, right here next to me, we've got theta and r, and there's the polar axis, and there's also the pole. And what the pole is, is it's the, the new name, I suppose, uh, on the polar coordinate plane, it's, the, it's what we call the origin. Instead of calling it the origin, we call it the pole. So let's go, well, here actually at the top of the screen, we see an example of this point three comma pi over four. And you notice that we have rotated pi over four radians up and away from the polar axis. In other words, the positive x axis. And then the r value of three moved us three units in that direction so starting from the pole, we have moved three units in the direction of pi over four. And we're going to do some more examples of plotting polar points right away. Notice, though, that the absolute value of the R value tells us how many units our point is away from the pole. And if the R value is greater than zero, then our point P lies along the line or the direction theta. If R is less than zero, and we will for the first time work with an R value, like a radius, an R value that's less than zero, and what, what an R value being less than zero does is instead of, instead of us starting at the pole and moving, for example, three units in the direction of theta, with a negative r value, we move however many units, three units, away from theta. I always imagine it as though I'm facing the direction that I'm supposed to be facing, and then I walk backwards away from that direction instead of walking forwards. So if r is less than zero, p lies along, maybe we could say the direction It's not much of an i, just can't help it. Mm, how about theta plus pi, or theta minus pi, or plus or minus 180 degrees? We're going to see examples of that also, and if our r value is equal to zero, then p lies at the pole. And that happens every once in a while. I'm pretty sure that we will get to the point where we're going to see an example of that. I don't remember if it's in this section, but we will get there. So here, let's see some examples, and I'm going to change the color of my pen. Is that going to work? Yes. And let's just make it larger. Well, all right, how about that? So first point is two comma pi over six. So I'm going down here to the polar plane and I'm gonna aim in the direction of pi over six and I'm gonna move two units in that direction of pi over six. 
starting from the pole. So I'm going to move out here, but I'm not going to actually draw that line with the arrow. I'm just going to put a point there. And you should probably label it. Uh, let's label these points up here toward the top of the screen. What about we call this can be point A and B and C, D, E. All right, so the first point that we plotted is point A. And then let's look at point B. Here we go. Here's one with a negative R value. So we need to aim in the direction of 3 pi over 2, which is due south. So we're aiming down, and then with a negative r value, we're going to move one unit away from 3 pi over 2. So instead of going down, I'm actually going to move up. I'll put a point there and label it with a b. Another negative r value. Okay, this time we're aiming at 7 pi over 6 for point c. We're going to move two units away from 7 pi over 6. Now 7 pi over 6 is down there in the bottom left corner of the screen. I'm moving away from it two units. And what happens is I end up here. So that point is also point C. So we've just seen two different representations for the same location or the same destination or the same point reminds us of conversations a long time ago it seems like now about coterminal angles like pi over 4 is the same thing as negative 7 pi over 4 for example those are examples of coterminal angles but let's keep going through the rest of these points point d aiming at 270 degrees which is also downward so that's due south, it's the same thing as 3 pi over 2. This time we are moving positive 2 units, so we're going to move 2 units toward 270 degrees, or toward 3 pi over 2. That puts us right there, we'll label that with a D. And finally point E. Now point E has a negative angle measure, so we need to be rotating from 0 down because it's a negative angle measure and we're rotating down pi, which is a half of a rotation. So that still ends us aiming west, if you will. And we have a negative r value of negative three, so we're gonna move three units away from pi, which moves us to the right. Three units, we'll put our point right there and label that with an e. All right, so we've seen negative angle measures, negative r values, and we have seen two different representations for the same point. Let's see what's next. Can we think of other ways to write the point two comma pi over six? Absolutely, we actually already saw one. Two comma pi over six was point A, and negative two comma seven pi over six was the same point, so let's write that one down. Another option, instead of using an angle measure that faces us away from our destination and then walking backwards into it, in order to aim at the original angle measure, pi over six, we had to rotate up and away from the positive x-axis. In other words, up and away from the polar axis. So to get to point A, we we rotated, that's way too large. Let's try this. We rotated right here in the first quadrant from the polar axis up to point A. Instead of using that as pi over six radians worth of rotation, we could start on the polar axis and rotate counterclockwise, or sorry, clockwise, and we could swing all the way around here in order to get to that same pi over six direction. So we use the negative angle measure of negative 11 pi over six. And once we've made that rotation, we're aiming in the correct direction so we could take our two steps forward and end up at point A again, as it was in the original example. 
The other thing that we could do with the negative angle measure is we could still aim away from point A and walk backwards to get there, but instead of using 7 pi over 6, which is a positive angle measure, we could use the negative angle measure of negative 5 pi over 6. Negative pi, 5 pi over 6 still aims us away from our destination, giving us the opportunity to take those two steps backwards and end up at point A again. So really these two sort of go together because they're using the negative R values. These two go together because they're using positive R values. You could sort of reorganize those however you like. In general, r comma theta is the same thing as, it's the same thing as a lot of things. It's the same thing as, uh, how should we write this? We can use the same positive r value, but instead of using theta, we could use theta minus two pi, or we could have added two pi for that matter. Matter of fact, you could add as many rotations as you want. You could use 2 pi k or 2 pi n, whatever's most familiar to you, whatever you've used most frequently to represent integer multiples of full rotations in this case. So k is an integer, like negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, right, integers. The other option that we've just seen is that we could use a negative r value, and instead of using theta, we could take theta and add or subtract a half of a rotation so that we're aiming away from our destination. Could you add a half of a rotation, and once you're aiming away from where you really want to go, could you add additional full rotations? You could. That's why I'm saying we, we could come up with all sorts of general representations for other ways to get to our destination, but these are the two primary ones. So in this exercise, we want to find other ways of getting to this point, and some additional constraints are given to us. Here we've got an r value that's greater than zero, and we have to use a theta value that's between one and two full rotations, so between two pi and four pi. <clears throat> Let's plot the original point since we have been given this really nice graph. We're aiming in the direction of pi over 6, and we have moved 5 units in that direction away from the pole. So that puts us out here. And, okay, so now we still want to use an r value that's greater than 0. I'm going to take the initial amount of rotation, pi over 6, and I'm going to add an entire rotation to it. So then I'm still aiming in the direction of pi over 6. So I'm going to say that this point can be written as 5 comma pi over 6 plus 2 pi, which is equivalent to an equal sign is a little bit of a hack, but I think you know what I mean. 5 comma, let's see, that would be 13 pi over 6. 13 pi over 6. All right, so I would I would be willing to type that in as a final answer while I was doing my online homework. There you go. What about if we're using a negative r value for part b? A negative r value means that my angle measure needs to have me sort of aiming away from my desired destination. And this diagram is nice, having a little sketch of it here on the right-hand side of the screen. I know that I need to be aiming away from my destination, which means I'm aiming at seven pi over six. So I can use my diagram to help me determine that angle measure, or I can negate my r value and take my original theta value of pi over six and add a full rotate, or sorry, a half of a rotation to it so that I'm aiming away from it. And if we do a little arithmetic, we get the point negative five, 7 pi over 6. I like using the diagram. It saves me from having to do the arithmetic of adding a half of a rotation to a given angle measure. Are you coming in? Okay. 
you'll never guess who's here. Let's see what's going on in part C. All right, so we're using a positive angle measure. This time we want to use a negative, uh, sorry, a positive radius. We want a negative angle measure though. So I'm going to take the original angle measure that was given to us and subtract a full rotation. So we'll use the positive five still and I'll use pi over six minus a full rotation. And that is equal to five comma negative 11 pi over six. All right, so there's a number of different variations. You can go through the same exercise with that as a starting point. And then I've drawn this little box here to remind me to stop here because that is the end of our first segment in our conversation about polar coordinates. And if you click on the link right below me here, I will make sure to, well, I won't make sure of anything. We'll just keep going. All right, so I'll see you there and we'll start talking about converting back and forth between polar coordinates polar, not back and forth between polar coordinates, back and forth between polar and rectangular coordinates. I'm trying to think about what I'm saying and I need to stop the video and anyway, see you in a second.